empires turn to pick. Aggressive from LGD. And they're not even dire, so they're not even cunning on the Roshan potential. They just want to have strong lanes, because Lycan is a strong laner. If you have like strong laners already, the hall is going to make them even stronger. And they're looking to push, you know, the, the, the very weak, um, like the weakness of Empire's draft right now is that they have very bad anti-push. And no stuns as well, yeah. more Lycan. So it's really hard for, yeah, exactly. Lycan can do whatever he wants in the fights. So anti is going to be split pushing, you know, but split pushing versus Lycan, that probably has a Necro 3 hitting your base, it doesn't work. I'm hearing a Magnus here. <laughs> yeah, confirmed. Even though the openers were the same, I think like the strategy for both teams has completely flipped, actually. Exactly, it's funny because you can't afford a mistake versus that line, right? Versus anti mage Bonnie Honor, if you like lose a fight for all or whatever, then the game is insanely tough. Do you think there's some brinkmanship going on? Because the opening three picks were exactly the same as the first one, and maybe one of the teams wanted the other team to think that that's what they were going to do, just straight, straight pick again? It definitely could have been a mind game between the yeah. two captains or the two teams if they draft collectively. I, I think we have what we have now is almost very different. It is. It's different. very different, but I, I could. I, I think there's a similarities between the two games. Like first game, LGD was on Dire side. They played a much more late game orientated lineup, and Team Empire this game, they're on the Dire and they're going for late game as well. So it tells us that the teams on the Dire side will prioritize having the Roshan, so they will go for a much more late game type of play, whereas the team on the Radium would be on the pushing side of things. Yeah, definitely. And Empire with that Magnus pick, they revealed that it's most likely going to be a co-op mid because AM is probably going to be safe lane and Magnus is going to be on the off lane. And LGD can still decide to hear what they want to put against the co-op. It's a co-op plus Bonnie Hunter, so it's very scary to play mid versus that combo. That's still a Viper though. It's one of the hardest combo. Like co-op Bonnie Hunter, like they can, they have a lot of killing potential. They have hull, so it's going to be. I think this is oh, very wow. risky. In my opinion, this storm pick is can be a big issue for LGD. They're gonna have to rotate supports there because the Storm alone versus Quap and Mondi Hunter, I don't think he can survive that lane. I mean, he has how damage from Lycan and obviously the Dazzle would get an early teleport score just in case to react towards the Bounty Hunter's movement towards the middle, to but the then, middle lane. Yeah, but then it's the Lina Lycan lane. You know, I, I, I feel like Empire can use that Storm pick. Sure, it's a very good pickup because as you said earlier, they have very few disables, but I could see Empire crushing the, the lane. I mean, base. I think their main plan is just pressure to AM, so the Bounty Hunter actually has to leave the lane. If the Bounty Hunter can't stay mid, and they have to have two supports to fend off that aggressive duo or tri lane, I think that will definitely open things up for Storm Spirit. Like, the move for Empire right now is to abandon AM, honestly. If they try to protect AM and co-op loses to Storm, that gets up from the supports in the hall, like, the game is going to be a disaster. They need to sack AM completely, let him XP and just win the other lanes, give space to Magnus, shut down the storm, and AM will catch up eventually. Do you think they could switch up the lanes as well, like put the Quap on the safe lane and put anti-mage mid against Storm? They could, but it's going to be a tough matchup for him, I think, especially with the hall. It's going to be very hard to go for the last hits. Yeah, their last support has to be someone that can do a lot of work early game. They need and an aggressive support. Yeah. yeah. Like someone that can kill, like, because after RP they need the support to deal damage. I'm thinking maybe Skyroth, he could deal with the Storm, and it's a lot of bursts and very good at roaming early. It, it can do, that hero can do a lot for actually versus what they have. And he, he roams a lot, Disruptor on Lohaden, so it's going to be interesting to see how he plays it. Okay, uh, quickly then, all, three, all, all four of you, quick predictions. Uh, Jeremy, I'm going to start with you. Based on the draft, what do you think? How do you feel we've drafted better? Um, I actually like Team Empire's lineup. Um, I think the Disruptor is really good for Storm. I think Anti Mage is going to be good for Storm if you can get strong enough. Um, I actually like Team Empire. Okay. Winter? Uh, I think Team Empire doesn't have the time to get, so I, I like LGD's lineup more. Okay. So. I go with Team Empire. Okay. I like Rampage. LGD's more. I think Ooh. the Lycan's going to push early in. Okay. Well, we've got two, two versus two up here on the uh, desk. Very interesting indeed. It's all tied. Let's find out from our commentary team where they think this one's going. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. It's game two with Cinderin and Toby One. I am grouping my seat, Paul, ready to go for game number two, LGD versus Empire. Cinderin, man, I'm loving LGD's early aggression, but Team Empire's team fight control is looking good. Yeah, I, I've got to go with, uh, who was it? Was it Merlini and Winter that favored LGD? Yes. Uh, I think 
I the think Winter's pressure, words were, there is no time for Empire. Yeah, the amount of pressure that LGD can output in the early game if, they, if their lanes go well, I think Empire simply won't be able to find the time to come back here. And if you look at ease of execution and what Empire actually need to do, they don't have an obvious setup or an obvious way to gank. You can mm -hmm. try to gank with Bounty Hunter and Quops lane, which is great, but how do you secure your AM the early game? Disruptor, not a good defensive support for him. Bounty can't really help that much. Uh, whereas for LGD, there's just way more flexibility. They can engage with the Storm, they can engage with Tusk, they have lots of spell burst, they have split push of Lycan at the same time to force heroes to move around. Yep. And then they have the Grave, which this time is not countered by Axe, which makes a huge difference the last game for Empire that they had that Grave counter. Um, I think Empire's draft is very greedy, and I think it's to the point where it's it's going to be too greedy for them, just like they said. But if it does pay off, then if it does Empire work, is their late game secure. is extreme, but... Yep. But it, a lot of it's going to come down to to the the pressure applied by Aloha, Aloha Dance on that Bounty Hunter. And I really want to keep close eyes on Always Wanna Fly. This disruptor play from Team Empire, it's not the first time, and it definitely won't be the last time we see it coming out from Empire. They love using this hero. It's a big favorite hero of the CIS scene, and they are just so good at it. If they can get one big combo, especially from finding inside their base, doesn't matter how tanky you'll be on the like, and you might just lose everyone else in your game. And now already Sentry Ward down for the Radiant side. They are trying to keep a low heart dance out of this middle lane, but they just de they actually dewatered. So Sentry Ward's down. You've got to be quick on the tangos. And these Sentry Wars just can't survive, but Aloha Dance has one more, and there's nothing left here for LGD. That's a clear win for Empire. The the Bounty Hunter will definitely be able to to rotate mid here. I'm surprised Xiao Wei went for the second Sentry, because even if it works, Aloha Dance can just trade again, and yep. he will get the advantage, so... Yeah. Essentially, all, all they, they use is a Tango, that's all. One Tango yeah. charge. It's a big change. Uh, I think when the patch notes came out, a lot of people just underestimated how much it would mean that you could Tango wards, but... It's huge for, for a place like this now. Xiaoi, okay, this is why he did it. He just <laughs> bought another pack. They put a lot of emphasis on the mid lane, but this is already a head start for Empire. Resolution's gonna have a pretty good time here in the lane, mm -hmm. and they have the AM farming. I'm actually surprised we don't see more pressure applied from LGD to try to stop the AM's farm this early. Yeah, They're it's, just it's playing just an offlane against him. That, that's it, it's, it's just Yao. But at the same time, you could look at Yoku on this offlane as the Magnus. He's in a position now where he's, where he's fairly happy, and MMY's been doing a pretty good job of trying to keep him off the lane. So there's 0-0 zero, zero CS right now for Yoku, but he's about to claim his first one here. So He's getting experience. Yeah. And that really is like, maybe that's the bigger question to ask. Like right now, is Yao getting as much as Yoku? Gold and experience, what's more valuable to both players? I would say the, the Tusk is more flexible without gold. Uh, whereas Magnus really relies on a blink dagger to have wow. a big impact on Sila, the game. Sila, Sila, middle lane, the blink down into the tower. Resolution getting very over aggressive. Just Living up to game number one, silent play on that Queen of Pain, but he's going to push Sila all the way back to base. This Lycan is going to get completely out leveled now by Resolution. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what the logic was for LGD. I feel like somehow they. <laughs> They've been out mind gamed, if you will. That Empire just put the standard lanes and that they were expecting something else to happen. Because for me, it's not very logical how they put their lanes with what they're matching up against. The mid lane, Lena Lycan is not good against Quap. You have no catch. Sure, you can harass a bit with Dragon Slave, but that's it. Resolution's still going to do fine. Mm -hmm. Uncontested AM. And at the same time, even the Magnus in the bottom lane is still getting his. So yep. I want to say Empire are doing well in all three lanes. And uh, I'm surprised LGD haven't. Adapted much yet. They still run their Lena like in mid here. Yeah, they're actually looking like Team Empire looking very solid. Stun on resolution in the mid. Uh, as you said, there's no catch. You might get that first light strike array. You turn on how. But where's your follow up damage? The wolves can dive under the tower, but resolution has blink. He can keep distance on them if, if he's really pressured into it. And to this point now, we see Team Empire like Animage getting early farm. He's got a P PMS as well as having the Quelling Blade. Do you almost feel confident enough that you go directly into Battle Fury? Or do you finish up Treads, go for another early game mark? Because he just actually bought... Okay, he's playing the Glover Face instead. Interesting. Actually gave up the Belt of Giant Strength for that. Yeah, he's definitely going to get Treads. Uh, 
Else, it makes no sense at all to buy the, the glove unless you want to go for the super old school Midas, <laughs> which is not a build anymore. No, no, not that. on this hero. Wait, well, not when you've got like an enemy mage with no one else trying to contest his jungle. Because that's the other side about Team Empire. The bounty wants to go on a hunt. The Magnus wants to go on a hunt. And if you need to, you can just give the uh, the buff up as well for the empower. Sentry was oh, down a lower down. He's gonna get snowballed, but he's out of range oh, of the shots. He pushed him up onto the hillside. The downside for Aloha Dance is he's got no way down. But on the bright side, LGD can't reach him. He's gonna need to ferry out a, a TP now from the base without getting noticed. And I think fortunately for Aloha Dance, LGD probably didn't realize that because else they could just camp and snipe the courier and or the bounty on the way out. I think he's asking his teammate. I think always when a fly is gonna buy one from the side shop or no, is it coming? It's coming on the, it's coming on the, the courier. Uh, courier now. But he's right in the edge of the cliff side. At least it's a wonderful seat in the house of TI5 to watch the game go by. <laughs> but you want to be involved. So there's your treads up for silent. We are 440 in, but it's, uh, it's 31 CS so far in for the anti-mage against your bigger here. Like this, it's the like and the one we're looking to have some kind of like big effect early on and push. Wow. Then he's only got 20 CS in this mid lane. He actually TP'd mid instead of to base, so he's got to be bottled by resolution here or salved. He has 200 health. There's no way he can make an aggressive play right now. Mm -hmm. Are they? Oh, okay. That's pretty confident. What, to see Yoku come in like this? No, Aloha Dance in the mid lane, they just goes in and melee dewards the sentry with 200 health on the enemy cliff. Like, if there's a support there, he's dead, but Maybe. they might know Xiao Wei is hanging out top right now. And he this might just be baiting Silas to the front line. Like, this looks like the first play from LGD to try to contest the AM, but it's just too late. And I'm wondering, okay, so here's my point. What mm -hmm. if LGD just put um, their Storm mid or safe lane, which would have been a matchup against Quap and Bounty. I know they were scared of it. It would have been a problem. They could have contested the aim. And Lycan could have been in the other lane, and you play an aggressive trial lane with Dazzle, Lina, and Tusk. AM is in so much trouble. Even if it's just the Dazzle there, the physical damage from Shadow Wave mm -hmm. ruins his laning phase. But instead, Dazzle has been bottomed the whole time. They could have, if they wanted to put some pressure, just put Dazzle top and, and just let maybe solo bottom against the mag. There is one big upside. Yoku has just wasted the last minute and maybe a minute and a half waiting on the mid lane for the Lycan to be in a slight position where he can skew with a shockwave. And Yoshi also saw the level up here from Resolution. He went directly into the Sonic Wave. So he's got a 2 1 2 1 built coming in from this Queen of Pain. Not a lot of early harass, but if the Magnus could get the initial grab, he'd be looking very, very good to get the kill. I generally disagree when, Queen of Pain, uh, when Queens of Pain don't get Sonic Wave on level 6. I think most of the time, you know, back in the day it was more common to like max out the Scream of Pain and then get Sonic Wave after. Yep. But since it's become pure damage, it's just such an incredibly powerful tool on level 6. So I'm happy to see Resolution do it. It's often that we see players who go two points in Shadow Strike first will get the third point in Scream before Sonic or maybe even the fourth. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's... It just doesn't have the same kind of impact. It's, good, it's better for pushing out the waves fast and for farming jungle. Uh, but as far as kill potential goes, you want that wave. I want to ask you a question as well. Is this worth it from Zhao Wei? He has spent, I think, 800 gold in the first seven minutes on just sentry wards. Like, they're seeing the rotation of the bounty hunter. They haven't lost a courier, yay. But is it worth crippling your Lena to a point where she doesn't even have boost? She's got no items whatsoever. Finding I mean, levels in the mid, but that's all. I mean, it's great to counter the bounty hunter, but essentially you're breaking even at best with the bounty as Lena right now. And I would say, yes, it's worth it if you're winning the farm war because of it, but you're not. Like, you're, you're just trading against a team that we agreed was, had a greedy draft and would probably do very well late game, but wouldn't have time. LGD is giving them lots of time. Mm -hmm. Just like, here, have some time. Hey, when, <laughs> what are they? Faces? They're not really paying for it. And no, they're not. I can't remember who in the panel it was who was like, it's pretty confident that they go for the Storm Spirit into the anti mage pick, which it is. Yep. Uh, but it's a very interesting matchup where if Storm has safe lane farm and gets a quick Orchid, he actually has a lot of pickup potential against the AM until he gets his Manta style. Mm -hmm. But in this game, the anti mage is farming at such a quick pace, Storm Spirit is still behind him on farm <laughs> oh, oh. that it might just almost overlap. And Sai's gonna be annoyed about that. He was sitting right on top of the regeneration rune and Bounty Hunter just steals it out from below him. To also say who it was, it was Winter who knew what was coming. He was the one that predicted the anti-mage. But Sila, like, just back into the jungle. How do you even, okay. So this Lycan, he's got some decent farm, but he doesn't look strong enough to go up against Team Empire right now. And they've got to get worried too that Magnus has found some levels. He's got RP, not Manda really supported, even though he does have Arcane Boots worth of farm. But 
You're going to push into what? Force down a tier one tower? Where's your aggression meant to come? You already said yourself, they can't gank Silent. He's already at a point where they can't kill him. They have a couple of plays. They can try to sneak a Roche, which is very risky against a Bounty Hunter and almost impossible to pull off. Or uh, they could draw attention with a gank from... Oh, they can just do They're this going for a low dance. This could be the first blood. A low heart dance. There it is. At almost nine minutes into the game, LGD are finally able to find something on Team Empire, but it's the just shy of level four bounty hunter only, while Annie Mage is still free on the top lane to do whatever he wants. I think if you're if you're LGD, either you start split pushing more with Lycan in the bot lane and you force rotations that way, and you, it makes it opens up the map for ganks from Tusk, who's closing in on level 6. Uh, or you do it with Lycan off the map, and he sneaks a Roshan. Meanwhile, something like that could work. Because a flat 5-on-5, five five, I think, is... LGD may be slightly favored right now, but just to... No, they're actually not even favored with Queen of Pain being level 8 now. I think the burst damage from, from Empire's team is just going to be too much to deal with. Can they, can they still find a quick pickoff? Because I'm looking at Storm Spirit at level 8. Uh, he's coming down for the 10 minute rune, and Aloha Dance is going to chase him down. There's no vision on Aloha Dance. In fact, Yao is already TPing out. They're bringing players to the top lane, so you suppose Yao wait as well as Yao. Smoking up for an opening, but resolution? Nah, they're not close enough to maybe to have a crack. Maybe, okay, maybe now when he jumps in like this. But they won't follow it up. He's keeping attention away. Starting to the front lines. Yao, ready to snowball in, but always want to fly. Starts both the ulti and the wall, and they're going to snowball underneath the tower. Resolution! There's your big Sonic Wave! Returning into LGD, punching the Mana Void, doing very, very little. But at the same time, blinking down further. Silent, too aggressive. Back into the fight. It's to be LGD getting the revenge kill. And what a big one as well. It's the Anti-Mage. Replay game one. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, it's unfortunate because we don't want to harp on it too much, but again, his blinks are just so aggressive. You, you know, he was very close to getting the kill on the Tusk and he was probably frustrated that his ultimate didn't give anything. But he still went for it and that is a very big price to pay there. Okay, so LGD is setting up everything underneath the Dire Observe Ward on the top lane. Empire read what's going on, obviously because they can see it all, and then just push into the middle lane. The bottom lane's already got a little momentum behind it as well. And LGD, they might be able to do some damage to the tower. Just like, it is kind of like game one again. Silo, wow, that's a lot of damage into you. Resolution's liking to drop them low. But it's, uh, it's the fact that you take a fight or you lose a fight, but you still come back and you push down the tower. It seems to be like LG's plan against Team Empire. But Silence on bottom lane with a catapult there. That tower's out of half-life. The middle lane's just above, it's like about maybe two-thirds. Underneath the Sentry Ward Bounty Hunter sitting there. That Sentry Ward's only got eight seconds left on it, however. And they're just trying to be a nuisance to Sylar. But this is almost a straight trade-off. Like, Yao comes to defend up against Silent, but he's fine with this. And there goes your, there goes your first tower. So the tier one tower dropped on top. And this is pretty important. This gives them access into the Dire Jungle. The good news for Empire is that they still have the top ward for three and a half minutes. As Yao was going for very, <laughs> very unlikely to hit Snowball there. You, you're, you're using Snowball against a lineup which has two blinks and a skewer. And then the potential just to glimpse you out the second you jump in. It's a danger world. It's interesting to see uh, Yao without any point in Sigil yet. I feel like it's unusual for Tusks level 7 to do this. Uh, the second level in Snowball is great for laning. Could be in trouble right now. That's going to be enough damage. Yeah. A d resolution double damage rune, that's where, it, that's where the extra bit came from. So they get rid of these Lycan Morbs as quick Dyer's as they can. So we're moving back into farming, so they give our dance his level 6 but space. Yoku's still away from that Blink Dagger. Like, should you be looking, like, getting level 6 on Bounty Hunter is obviously going to be a brilliant thing. But should you be looking to get this Blink Dagger onto Yoku as a, as a higher priority? Dyer's bottom tower I think they can just get both at the same time, right? Just let Yoku take the farm and... Bounty Hunter to take the experience. I mean, obviously they would share in that case, but right now Aloha Dance is in the jungle getting experience from the, the Vool camp, but now he's going to rotate over to the top lane, so they'll be getting both at a pretty decent timing. This Magnus, he has 30 ACS minute, thir minute 13 in the dire off lane. That's really good. Animage is also now only a thousand gold away from that Battle Fury and with 13 minutes into the game. And that's including treads and with a death. Yep. Without the death, he would have almost had it by now. Because it's not the gold he loses, but it's the gold he doesn't gain while he's dead that hurts the most. Here comes that LGD pressure. They'll take the tier one tower, always gonna fly. Venturing close to the cliffside where the LGD are currently smoking up. 
They leave an aggressive ward behind. They're pinging out the top lane again. I don't know if they're looking at Silent and wondering if they can do something about him. That's level six on Aloha Dance. Oh. Still, still no level six over on the Lena, so there's no burst coming from that. And yeah, Loa Dance just walks over Sila, puts a track on him so he can see what's going on. And anyway, just gonna blink into the trees. Probably wants to get away. Storm Spirit jumps in, gets the dust. Maybe there's enough mana left here with stick charges to ensure the kill on the bounty hunter. Though, nice little snipe there from this LGD. Is a, this is a big kill for him to get. Maybe gets another 300 gold. And his Orchid timing is very crucial in this game with. I think LGD are not really, I, I mean, it's hard to tell, but with the lanes they did, maybe they are satisfied with the amount of pressure they've put so far with two towers at 14 minutes, but have to know AM and Co-op have good farm. Mm -hmm. But if he gets that Orchid that little bit earlier, it can negate the, the impact the AM could have or just delay his game impact by five minutes, which is a huge deal in a game like this. Yep. It allows their, their lineup to come online way more. I'm still watching Yoku so closely. Like, if, if Yoku can get up to that, that 2250, get the Blink Dagger, then pushes like this from LGD are so much scarier. So that it's almost like they're trying to capitalize on the time they've got before these things come online. Absolutely. So the tier 2 tower is going to drop. Silent's almost taking out the bottom tower. Xiao Wei gets the stun. Silent dropping low. There's still no level 6. Now he gets it after Silent blinks away. A Laguna Blade kill would have been close. Yeah. I think he would have had 100 health after that. Resolution now. They've actually got Xiao Wei and MMY. This could be an easy double kill for him. They just need to burn the mana, and now Xiao Wei, he's low. The Yule set the rope, and the Sonic Wave completely blown. The Shock Wave comes up to ensure the kill. That's actually Yoku's uh, Blink Dagger right there, and they will get MMY. This time they have to wait because there's no Culling Blade, and Yoku, not a healthy man, but he does Whoa. pick up the Blink Dagger and a skewer to TP away to safety. Empire look a bit nervous from that play. The Sonic Wave was off target, or I, I think it hit none of them, right? Right? Yeah, it, did, it, hit it didn't hit the Yule target, didn't hit the one outside of Yule's, I think. Yeah, it was off target completely. It, it hit nothing. And then Silent blinks into the trees and gets stuck, but at least he has a quelling blade so he could come out and, and hit there. But they they look a little bit shaky here. They Still, do. the game is okay for them. Like they're, they're leading on golden experience. The game plan is definitely coming together. And it's all about the time, isn't it? Like Because Empire's still enjoying their, their late game. And as the guys in the panel were saying, when you go to Bounty Hunter, you're not feeling the same pressure as game one, where you're on the clock. You have to win by a certain point. Like, you can defend from inside your base. You look for the, for the track kills. Uh, sound also, be really careful when you're that low. Uh, but it's, it's one of these things where Empire, maybe they're just not feeling as pressured. They might get pressured more now that maybe finishes up this Orchid on the Storm Spirit. So his initiation is becoming better and better. I really like this skill build from Maybe, by the way, which we almost don't see anymore. And there's a good reason why we don't. Because most of the time, Storm Spirits these days just go for an Static Remnant, for an Overload, and then you start getting Vortex because it slows the enemy down, but it also slows yourself down. He, I think he is exclusively getting this build. The only reason he's getting it is to counter you. He wants points in Vortex, so he has long lockdown time together with the Orchid. And since the Static Remnant does pretty weak damage to him with his Spell Shield, it's all about the physical damage you can output during these two disables. So. I like this choice very much in this situation. Well, it seems to work for now, but later on, that anime is still going to find more and more farm and like more and more strength. T1 Towers fall from bot. There's no fortification, so they can slow this down. But Yoku's ready to fight. Like he's in the tree line with a blink dagger, and he could potentially just get a big RP. But he needs help. Always when it flies in the neighborhood, and that is your help. That's a big disruptor. And he sees Yao, just gonna skewer him up. And now, well, snowball, but the wall's already there. And Yao, there's nowhere to run away if Storm Spirit wants to jump in. Well, actually, they just jump over to Roshan. Yao is currently gonna get glimpsed back up again. Resolution is here, so Yao will die. But Roshan's already been taken out by LGD. Easily worth the trade here for LGD. Grabbing the Roshan just for the Tusk kill. Is it, is it really still though worth it when, when Silent continues to farm up? Like they, they get a kill with two heroes on bottom, you're still getting a lot of farm for Empire. That is still totally worth it for them. They need this Aegis. It's the... You know, it just puts so much more pressure on the map when there's an Aegis on the Storm. Like, well, what you go for it? Here we go. Storm this Spirit is a very big... Jump up. Okay, he's not... Silent. Actually not falling through. Um, yeah, not attacking at all. So, okay, that was anticlimactic. It almost looked like one of those situations where you jump and you just disconnect. <laughs> but he didn't want to go for it. I think he might have actually been able to kill him, but he was scared of the counterplay from Empire, which wasn't in position at the time. Of course, respecting the potential for Disruptor mm -hmm. to come in with a glimpse as well as Static Storm. If Silent did hit him once, though, as you just saw it, like, it's only one point up in Mana Break, but one attack dropped maybe down to a point where he only had like, a, like another short jump left. 
Yeah, he had 200 mana, so he could have... In order to kill the AM there, he has to use his entire mana pool, and then maybe he's afraid it's just going to be a trade, or that he doesn't even get the kill. Yep. Um, I want to mention as well that Yoki, or sorry, Yoku has gone for... Oh, Aloha. No, wait a second. Easy jump. Yeah, he is Dust him, and uh, they bring him down as a kill. So the Magnus this game surprised Yoku went for this skill build. Usually when you're playing with a melee carry in competitive Dota, you like to get more emphasis on Empower and a little bit less in Skewer. So you go like 4-3-2-1 build when you're level 10. Um, but in this case, he has maxed out the Skewer. Of course, it gives more distance and more damage, which is great. But I would say the farming rate for AM in this game is it's everything, right? They're building yep. the lineup around AM getting big, so with Empower, he can farm a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And of course, it also... His impact in the next 10 minutes, the problem for Magnus is the time it takes for him to get high level Empower now is really long because of how long level 11 is as this is going to be another easy kill. Yeah, they, get, they have to get rid of this Observer Ward Team Empire. It's just seeing way too much. They threw down the Sentry Ward expecting Observer to be up on the high ground, but Radiant's so far, every, every time we looked, at, looked for that ward, it's just... It's been on the, on the lower side of the jungle, closer towards the camps. But at the same time, okay, so... I keep seeing your point, and I keep seeing like LGD adding pressure after pressure after pressure. It's all built around the AM farm, but Magnus keeps being on the other sides of the map. They're trying to gank elsewhere on other heroes, add more pressure, so they can understand how the skewer build's coming in. And then you get resolution. He completes the Aghanim Scepter now 20 minutes in, after finishing up a Yule Scepter and treads as well on this Queen of Pain. So it's almost like Empire accepts the fact they will lose all out of towers, and after then does the game begin. Animage just slips through the cracks of the LGD lineup, you find your space to farm up, and then Empire just take it with LGD, try and push and take a tier three tower, but if they feel pressured to do so. But that's the whole point, right? You say he's going for a fighting build with a lot of points in Skewer, but they're not fighting. So mm -hmm. why not go for the farming build if you want to farm and just give up your towers? It's, it seems a little bit strange for me. Now, the, the thing I do think here is if they are forced into a fight in their base, the extra two points in Skewer might... Like, that extra 140 magic damage might actually make a really big difference because they have to be looking at their lineup and be like, oh, they have to be looking at their lineup and be like, our bounty hunter's dead again. <laughs> There's no balling after yeah. him at the moment. And Aloha dance. It was just on the edge of the range of dust, but it was able to connect an LGD. This is now the fourth time they've killed off the Bounty Hunter out of the seven kills they've got. And Yoku, TP out, Vortex, he's in range for it. Yoku's gonna be controlled. No Blink Dagger for him. He actually buys up a Staff of Wizardry, accepting his fate of death. The shards are coming in too, but maybe we'll finish the job by himself. And you've just got to kill over the Magnus. There's no buyback available, and you just also finish level three Necro Books on the Lycan. Maybe now is the time. Wow, that efficiency from maybe. <laughs> he actually... I feel like it's very rare we see this, but the regen rune ran out on him. He actually didn't even get full mana from his regen rune. He just kept using it over and over for that kill, and then ultimately it expires, and he just put, gets full mana from Arcane Boots here, but he used that very well there. And now Aloha Dance, not well, again. That's number five. They need detection, however. They don't have it. They're just trying to do it with AoE, and actually he walked in range of the sentry board on the hillside, allowing them to find the kill. There is, however, still track on Sila, so Empire have a little bit of vision outside their base with the Necro units being triggered. The LGD trying to finish this nice and early, get a fresh mana style on Silent as the fight will begin. But the buyback says one on Quap and there's one on Bounty Hunter. That's all you've got. An early Orchid being used here by maybe on Resolution. It's holding off the Sonic Wave for now. And Resolution's still gonna get rid of these Necro units, but then Storm Spirit jumping on the Quap, disrupt their ulti, they're trying to control the Storm Spirit, and where's Quap? Can't blink away in time, Stalin already did it himself, but these Necro units are chasing up the Storm Spirit, it's only the Aegis, the Immortal they might pop here, that's gonna be all, unless there's some spill damage from the Mana Void, but even then, they're just trying to let him stay alive, it's still a long time, there's your Mana Void, can't do the work, the regeneration rune, it was actually the Aegis timing, they were trying to wait out, and they couldn't wait long enough, the melee rack still drops an LGD fall back. Maybe just kept running them. Please kill me. <laughs> They're like, nope, we're gonna wait for it to expire. And then immediately he gets a burst of mana and jumps out when it when it does expire there. So mm -hmm. LGD got what they came for. And you know, when you look at the overall way this game has gone and you look at the last hits and denies, if you just bring up the last hit chart, you're like, okay, you just got into this game. It's probably looking pretty good for Empire just based on farm. <laughs> but the whole way LGD has structured the game is they let AM farm because their timing window 
when they're strongest, which is right now at 20, and will not have peaked. Even with complete free farm right now, he still is not strong enough to fight them. He needs another five or 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they've just mapped this out from the start that we'll let AM farm, in turn we'll farm Storm and Lycan, and we will look for these base pushes around this time before AM gets too strong. Instead of contesting him and maybe sacrificing farm on one of our cores for it to shut down the AM, which would slow down our lineup as well. So. It makes sense, and I feel like, well, you can't really argue with how LGD has executed this so far. And if nothing else, the way they lane has made Bounty Hunter have, like, zero impact in the game. Storm managed to find style, but the Mana Star's gonna break free, burn out as much matter of maybe as possible, but he jumps up, there's not a lot left in the tank, and in fact, with Bounty Hunter here, AM needs time, and well, RP, they hold maybe in position, the Mana Boy will take him out! That's a lot of money for an enemy mage! Chasing up the Yao, out, Yao, remember, it's also going to be track kills coming their way. Resolution wants to blink forward, so we go into the Yule Scepter, Xiao Wei's got his own one, Resolution! Again, a zero man Sonic Wave. They snowball in. They're chasing after Yoku. He runs to the side and then skewers away to safety. So they cannot reach him. They have trick of the Necro units here, LGD. They chase after him. Yoku trapped in with the shards, trying to run away, but there's just too much damage from the big wolf. They chase after Aloha Dance as well. Into the tree, storm up, and they get the kill. With a burst damage out from Dazzle. It looked like Empire was finding something. Then LGD just hit back. But they did get a kill on the AM. Absolutely perfect duels from Xiao Wei. It makes a really big difference in that fight. Sure, it's a zero-man Sonic Wave, but it was supposed to be a one-man Sonic Wave. It's not like he airballed in you know, like three or four potential targets. But Xiao Wei's timing was perfect, and he is able to come back in that fight and get multiple spells off afterwards instead of just flat out dying and making it a five on three. I still think it's it's super ballsy from Empire to try to go for that play. So Silent has almost no health after the fight. They did get the kill on Storm. He has Bloodstone though, so he would be respawning like 10 seconds after they went on the for the engage on the Lina. Mm -hmm. And they still try to chase that. It's it feels like they're stressing a little bit in this game so far with their plays, like missed spells, rush decisions. Nice. And as a matter of fact, I, you know, it's just Empire's playstyle. It's what we've talked about. They're a very aggressive team, but this is the kind of game where they need to play more slow and calculated. And so far, they've managed to get the farm. They haven't really managed to execute the fights they have been forced into that well. I think anyone on the TI5 stage would be nervous. And Team Empire, not any exception right now. But they are still sitting in a position where they're not out of this game just yet. The advantage, of course, is heavily there for LGD. They almost peaked up a 5k net worth advantage. The experience, hilariously enough, LGD haven't led this entire game, but they're very close to, for the first time in 26 minutes, getting up on the top of it all. The thing is, being even at minute 25 means they're leading. Like, that's just, their lineup is simply just stronger right now, or especially in the last 5 to 10 minutes. Having an even graph like that and the farm distribution the way it is, is, is easily good enough. Now they take the last tier two. Um, and the question is when the next Roshan is. So it's it's in about 40 seconds it looks like. So yep. we'll probably see LGD try to set up for that. And they can kill it off really, really fast. And does Team Empire even try and stop this? You do have RP available, but the Magnus isn't really in any good condition to fight right now. He buys a four star, so you'll have some more maneuverability to play around with when it comes to uh, the Roche pit. Resolution, quick blink away, maybe, is not going to chase any further. Resolution's also finding some good cash, 2.7k over on him. And is this a time where you look for the BKB, or is almost Lincoln Spear going to be a better thing when you're going up against a hero like a Storm Spirit? I think he needs BKB. There's simply too much between Storm, Tusk, and Lina to be able to deal with in the fights. But even then, he still can't play super aggressively with the Quab. If he goes for blinks similar to what Salon did in the last game, and he blinks into the enemy team very aggressively, Lycan's going to kill him before Blink is off cooldown again. So mm -hmm. then he's going to need the four step from Yoku to be used defensively, or they're going to need to land a good RP when the Lycan goes on Quab. Maybe they only get a one hero RP then, which is not ideal. Uh, there's definitely a couple of problems to, uh, to deal with here for Empire. Now, the good news for them is, even if they're behind the melee ranks and the th things are not going too well, they haven't slowed down their farm, and they do have the Bounty Hunter. And with the overall goal of the game being pretty even, they can get a pretty big swing out of just winning a fight right now, or just getting trading, right? Team Empire gets sent three Storm Spirit jumps in, Yao! Very quickly on the way in, but Aloha Dance stays alive. They're gonna glimpse attended Yao back, but he moves so quickly. Now Storm can go in again. They just jump over top of Aloha Dance, still no detection. Now it's gonna be there, but skewer back. Maybe he's out of mana. There's nothing more to give, but they've already taken out the disruptor here, LGD. As Empire move into the Radiant Jungle, Roshan is alive and fighting. 
Good fit for Empire. They trade one for one, core for support. Yes, sure, the core suicides, but Lycan has used everything. He's used Book, he's used his ultimate. They're even going to clean up the Necro units here for an extra 400 gold for Silent. And Magnus is closing in on higher levels. And this is really important, because this... I, I know I'm talking about the Empower a lot, but it makes a really big difference for Silent to get that extra 30% damage and cleave. Yep. Now, unfortunately, Aloha Dance will... <laughs> I'm not sure what the plan was there. Maybe just giving them information. Even if he gets ganked, they know where they are. Oh, the smash from Roche. Silent's trying to get rid of the yeah. dogs, and yeah, he gets smashed by Roche, down, so he's unable, unable to do so. And they still have RP, by the way, which LGD probably would have noticed if he used it, so they know it's available. Are they coming and in? And that's to try what could have allowed this? them to Roche, is that they still have, have the RP for Empire. It's a big threat. M Empire backed up to take care of the middle lane, but now LGD. They start going on Roshan, and Roshan is dropping so quickly that RP has to come now. They're smoking, so they're moving very, very quickly. The oh. blink line and maybe blind RP would catch out too. They jump in with the enemy mage. Yule set the rough already over on San. He evades the light strike array, and maybe, well, Yao actually keeping the rest of Empire at bay. The jumps up, always want to fly a Laguna Blade. They bring down the Disruptor, so there's no storm here. But Silence let the ulti go. Yoku, again with that skewer, trying to get back in range of his own tier 3 tower. Roshan did die, and it went the way of the Storm Spirit. I'm not sure if Empire could have held that, but it looks like a little bit of a blunder that LGD just get it completely for free. They, they're going to go in. There has to be a good RP now. The game is probably over for them already. Well, wait for the jump. There it is over an Aloha Dance. The Weave's also going to go to work, and Aloha Dance. Wow, that's not a great time for him. But the Mana Void tearing apart the Storm. Remember, there's the Agassi Maul, the gems over on the deck. And then Wabi had to grab it. There's no balling in. In fact, maybe back to World of Living. Straight after Yoku. Still no RP. Where are these buybacks that don't exist for Team Empire? But the Annie Mage is able to find a couple of kills. Silent trying to run out of here. Resolution staying on the tail. How long will that survival last? And it's going to be long enough. Silas back to base. They find him and why Yule steps up, cancelling that TP out. Maybe he's still in the neighbor, but he knows he can't do anything. The gem is lost for LGD. A triple kill for the Anti Mage. That will actually help him complete the full butterfly on the Anti Mage. But they lost the range racks. Not really a bad trade off at the end of the day, if you look at it. No buyback from Empire. Good enough for Empire. And it's a good sign for them that they can win the fight without using RP, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, has he used it all game? Uh, he used it one, once. Once. once he did one one-man RP, I think. But every time he tries to jump in, it just seems like he's getting torn apart LGD before he can get just, it off. LGD are very good at spreading out, and the, both the Tusk and the Storm are paying a lot of attention to Mag and counterplaying him whenever he's trying to go for anything to just jump Orchid or Snowball onto him and <laughs> counter him out very well. But Empire still managed to get a pretty good fight out of that, all in all. So this anime is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. The Lycan... Like, the Lycan and Storm are kind of like the two major heroes that have to control him. Can they do this while he's got Butterfly up and running? Like, you need a Monkey King bar over on the Lycan, but is that really the path he wants to go down? And is that even going to be enough? Because by the time he gets that, Sam will have his next item. Be it hard or whatever. I think with an MKB, even a, even a heart, Lycan is still gonna kind of hurt really hard. Um, I would definitely say it's the way to go now for Siler, is MKB or BKB, whatever he thinks is most important. So far he hasn't needed the BKB, he hasn't died yet, even though he's against the Queen of Pain and of course the Disruptor with uh, that Static Storm damage output and all the magic damage from even Magnus and Bounty. He's still able to play it pretty well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see an MKB build up. Um, I'm just... You know, that last fight, the reason it's as easy as it is for Empire is that Storm went for the jump. He didn't... He, they find a kill on Aloha Dance, who is, like, the least valuable target. Of course, you remove the track, but as far as fight output goes, like, what he does is track. That's what he has. He yep. can't really do that much else, but... Um, he trades, like, three-quarters of his mana pool for that, and AM blows up the Lina with the mana void and the Storm. So they lose Aegis and Lina for the bounty. And then, of course, it's going to be very difficult for them. So, might need to be a little more careful. Might need to get a Lincolns on the Storm, or even a BKB. And that fight goes very, very differently. Well, he's got money. He's got 4k gold over on that Storm Spirit. So, it will be possible. But at the same time, Team Empire, they're getting stronger and stronger with their defense now. Like, even, like, normal heroes having this empower buff up, they're gonna be, take care, be able to take care of the mid lane without having to have Animage there every time. And the attack into the tower, like, this tier 2 tower might be fortified right now, but the backdoor regen, like, he just leaves it with the illusions, and Sound's already out. There's fun to be had on top lane. He's moving wherever he can get bigger and bigger. These elves are doing a lot of damage. They hit for, like, 10 a swing, and they hit really fast. 
Yeah, that town was almost gets it. Oh. Now regen kicks in. He got it down to a quarter. It's not bad. But he took he took all of the raining well most of the raining creeps before that. TP's up to top lane, takes a creep wave in half, jumps into one of the camps, takes that, then back up to take out the creep wave. And now you're seeing him at 23,000 net worth. Like the light can't keep, can't keep up with this kind of speed. Not that level of farming, at least. I'm very curious to see where Silent goes here. I think the the obvious choices right now would be either a BKB or an Abyssal in the standard AM builds, or maybe a Heart, which I think is not the best choice here. So you're thinking Abyssal um, for more of like lockdown oh, well, control, so we can actually kill LGD as opposed to survive so like, LGD? It depends what you're aiming for, right? The Heart is the best item for him probably in terms of just EHP against a Lycan, especially if you anticipate it's the MKB hard. to come. That would be hard, yeah. So it's very good against Lycan. And to an extent, also against the storm. But it's, oh, okay. Silent blinks up very aggressively, build. but now he's got a mana style. There's no life strike array follow up. He's just going to take the agents away from the Lycan. But that's a very aggressive blink from Silent. The alternative would have been so if he goes BKB, he is not threatened by Lina or Storm, or very little by Tusk. Like it's a Walrus punch, and that's it. Uh, on the other hand, Lycan can maybe carve through him with this heart, heart, heart build. It's vice versa, right? He he can get disabled a lot. I still think they will really struggle to kill him. And maybe the idea is, well, if I have a heart and they use a lot of disables on me, that's probably going to set up for resolution to get a good Sonic wave, and maybe for Yoku to get a, a, a good RP, and then it all doesn't matter. So to so, so use Silent more as bait. I suppose he could also just farm the buyback gold anyway if he really needs to yeah i wouldn't say as bait more than more than you know he doesn't have to feel the pressure of having to output a lot during a bkb timing mm -hmm. but rather just being able to you know play aggressively in general over a stretched fight is probably what he's aiming for here with the heart. LGD are coming up to Silent. Sila already into, into like and form, but Silent saw him, and now he's just trying to run himself away. This is a Whoa. blind man smoke, and he's going to blink again. And that's a long jump down for maybe, and a four-man smoke committal coming out from LGD. Yeah, Empire could actually go for a counterplay right now. I think Storm was already lost half his mana. Well, he's going to regen it now. So they had to do it pretty much right away, and they will go for it at this point with Silent with the heart 3k health. It just looks like they're trying to secure the tier 2 tower, but Roshan, like, we still have just under two minutes until his potential spawn time. And Team Empire will have this in the back of their mind. If they can get... Well, then again, is this another one of those points where you don't want to see the Aegis over on Silent? That you would give it to, to give it to Resolution in this game? Or even to Magnus, mm. considering Yoku hasn't got himself an ulti off yet. Or a big one. Oh, wait a second. He showed himself in mid. Storm. This opens up bottom lane for LGD. They dive in deep and they just keep going. The snowball and can disrupt a, a heavy commitment. Maybe he's down to a lower percentage of his mana pool, but they find an opening of resolution. Orkin and he self fuels it to try and get out. Now in comes Silent, focusing on MMY. He's out of the fight for now, but he's lost two of his teammates. They move over the mana void, ripping apart the Lina. Over towards Yahoo, who's also dry, but the blink up. Maybe he jumps in again, but Aloha Dance keeping these Yuri Tosses flying. Maybe he's on the run out. He needs to keep the man low and Silent's gonna do so. Like it, back to the fight. Silent turns over now on, on Sila. He needs more help, and then maybe Beast up. There's your Shuri Tops coming out. Any mage finds one, and the claim is a double kill. It keeps going. Silent, finally Dota. Empire will get a triple kill and wiping the entire side of LGD from the face of the earth. And Aloha Dan survives. He does so much damage. Like, look at this cleave he has. This is level level 3 in power as well as the Battle Fury. If their heroes are even remotely close to each other, Silent will 3 or 4 hit, like, 3 of their heroes. Only the Lycan is really tanky right now. If we I believe Storm our, has decent tankiness. If but. we believe our teamfight recap, it said he did just shy of 8,500 damage during that fight. That sounds about right. It's big. And now takes tier 2, pushes tier 3, Storm Spirit's gonna jump out, Sam memory still pretty tanky, Laguna played, he's just shrugging it off, this shield, and now it's actually Xiao 8, and there, are, there is a mana void available, he needs to burn all mana, Yule set the rock, but any mage, he's still got 1700 life, they're working through it, now Yao's back, punching him up, Silent, get out of town, he's down for the count, Silent, he was jumped out by maybe, finding a low high dance with the Orchid, they're gonna catch out, they might have survived, but Empire just keeps so much back to LGD. Shaoid is such a baller. That was like incredible timing two or three times in a row there. The way they chain their disables and just buy time and slowly whittle him down so the heart never regens him, that was, to me, that was the best play of the entire game. The way they just killed Antimage here. Absolutely incredible chaining. Uh, read on the fight and what they could do.
And now they end up forcing out a buyback as well. Because Empire are probably scared that Roshan is going to be taken right now. He's mm -hmm. not spawned, but they don't know. Well, they got no way to scout out for it either. Incredible. Unless... Again, LGD's high ground defense is just like out of this world. That was fantastic. Look at him smoke and move. Like, Silence is going to blink straight in, looking for Roshan. No one's there, and LGD, they're like, now that the buyback come out from Anti-Mage, they don't have to worry. If they can get a dieback on this Anti-Mage, it's so big. Like, you might have 2,700 net worth, uh, 27,000 net worth compared to the 19,000 of the Lycan, but it, it doesn't mean anything if you're dead. And they can put him in the ground and, and not be able to bring him back up. So there's the one minute counter now on Roshan. And the fact that Silent just fought back is gonna... It puts a lot of pressure on Empire. Like, they felt pressured because Roshan could spawn. If they knew the Roshan spawn timer, he wouldn't have fought back, and they would have been in a way better position. Right now, any big mistake from Silent is game over. All these movements from Empire being watched so closely. The dogs are just sitting behind them. Aloha Dance lost the gem by sticking around too long with the anti-mage in that bottom lane. And because of that, LGD, they can just keep tabs on all the movements of Empire. So once again, like the D Ward's gonna be there, but the Wolves come up. Silent actually made to find an isolated Xiao Wei, and they should be able to find this kill. Support, where is it coming? In fact, Storm Spirit jumped to the side. They took out Disruptor, but the Yulzer from Xiao Wei is delaying so much. The final track did come in, but Silent to the front lines. How much damage? He's still chasing after a low hard dance. The Sonic Wave, Silent dropping so low, he doesn't have much more to give until the Shadow Grave will keep him up. Maybe isolating Yoku, he doesn't even get the RP off once again. Silent diving so deep is actually resolution that finally cut finds that kill over on Sila. But where is his anti mage going? Chasing after Yao. The track is up again. The mini suns. Yao so low. He's waiting on the mana void, realizing the shallow grave is coming back in again from Dazzle as maybe a TP out with that ball lining going to work. Yao, they still see him with the track. But Empire can't force the issue that deep once again. But Roshan is up. They may only have two heroes alive, but it's two big ones. Yeah, Silent can solo it. So. And they should be fine. There's 50 it. seconds on the Lycan. This is an Aegis for Resolution, I think. Yep. But there's also Cheese. The Courier, I think, is already on its way out to pick that up. So they can save it for later. And maybe. Is this the time? He doesn't have BKB, however. So if he jumps in here, he could just get Yule set it up the second he arrives. Roshan down to 4,000. Yao with the shards. He's going to try and isolate it. Roshan's still there. Silent actually pushed up on the cliffside. He'll blink back down again. But now the rest of LGD has arrived. Maybe BKB, six seconds. And they actually leave Roshan. Silent with the weave on him. He's losing armor quickly. And the rest of Empire is not ready yet. But that RP is from Yoku. Giving the buff up to Silent. The Sigil keeping close tabs as well on Empire's progress. And Roshan now, 800 life. Where's the opening? Are they coming? In fact, I think LGD to say is too much. Much effort, we're gonna let him have it. <laughs> Look at that defense. <laughs> Immediately when Roshan dies, they're respecting LGD a lot here, thinking that the storm will go for that. Immediately blink in the co op, skewer in the Magnus. Maybe he was in the right position, soul. like the rest of LGD were there. But it just must mean like you had all the time in the world to discuss, are we going to do this? Yeah. And they said no. But this anime, I cannot believe how much money he has got. It's almost 30,000 net worth over on Silent. He's actually going at 789 gold per minute. His experience is almost the same at 770. The closest to him on the Radiant side, well, is actually Sila at 503. That's as close as you get. There's such a huge difference in the, in the cause right now. And he's almost managed to wait out his entire buyback time. He's got another three minutes to, to burn here. Now, the thing is, we've reached the late game part now when Empire kind of peaks, I think. When Antimage has the Abyssal, this is their, the peak of their lineup. Come super late game, based on the farm that Yoku has got this game, I think the chance of a refresher is pretty low. There's going to need to be a couple of good fights with Track, and then they might just win the game off that before he gets refresher. Yep. Uh, but if that doesn't happen, and AM is maxed out very soon, Lycan has a lot of room to grow, so does Storm. The Tusk can actually grow if, into a decent semi-carry if they want. And it looks like Xiaowik's Lina in this game is actually aiming for a Hex, which he has the ultimate orb for already on this. This is a, like a Lotus Orb build. Why did I say Lotus Orb? I don't know. Lincoln's build. <laughs> that's, that's... <laughs> he could go for a de okay, defensive item, right? So <laughs> it's, I think it's Hex. It could be a Lincoln's if they feel like it's useful here to protect the storm. But I think he's getting his own anyway. It looks like he at least has an ultimate orb his, himself as well. Um, Tough to say. Um, but they definitely have more room to grow than the Dire Lamp. Like, this Bounty Hunter do. is not going anywhere this game. And Disruptor has a point booster minute 43. So, yep. 
Okay, it's but definitely I'm, about LGD's growth. I'm still seeing Andy Mage though, right now, dishing out almost 400 damage a cleave. And he's almost got the money as well for the full Abyssal Blade. The issue he's going to have is, well, his mana style timing is going to be really important. Now you also get a Heaven's Halberd over on Yao. He's got the potential to disarm the Anti-Mage. And this can be after the other initiations come in. But it looks like Empire, they're not wanting to wait the clock out. They're coming down. There they're looking go. for the opening. In fact, there's the full Abyssal Blade. Anti-Mage just buys it. This no means he, he has no buyback anyway, so yeah, why, why even worry about it? Just go, go for home, go for broke. And they've almost taken the tier 2 tower. The creep wave doesn't stand a chance against this anti-mage. And the rest of Empire. Now how much damage can they do and how quickly can they do it? The solar crest being used on the anti-mage, so attacking him is almost impossible right now. The only thing they can do is try and disable him, but they're using Silent as a punchy bag, and he just jumps in! Destroys the Dazzle! No shadow group, but maybe looking for revenge and always want to fly. An ulti, can he get something off? He actually can! Splitting up this engagement! Sila, he does chase down, but again, so much commitment for the Disruptor, while Xiao wait inside the base. There's your bash! Got it on Sila, the Sonic Wave! It'll do some work! Resolution still low, taking too much damage from the tower, but Yoku is forward, and there's your mana void! Xiao Wei will drop! Yao's trying to run out of here! Sila will move down, and maybe! Back into the fight, doing as much as he can. Aloha Dance, low at the moment. RP still up for Team Empire. It hasn't happened, but at the same time, they've only lost one hero. If Yoku can just ensure one more, they could potentially take double racks and force us into a third game here. They can make it, they can make it before the two, before Alina and Tusk respawn. What's so time meant to do? His Storm Spirit jumping in. Yoku, your time, man. It is your time for ultimate. They get rid of the wolves. The million rex is going. Yoku, he silenced up again. He can't do anything. Maybe a pistol blade. And there's your Storm Spirit going down. That's Team M5 find the combo. Sila to the front lines, beating into resolution, going for Aloha. But now Sila losing his mana, losing his life. Forced back again. It's still a double raxing empire. They're going up to MMY. Is this the death push? They're moving up. They need the tier three tower. The fight for Megas is real for Empire. They're so close to forcing a third game. No mistakes. Yeah, Backdoor regen is going to kick in and they will give up on uh, getting the third lane. So LGD managed to buy themselves some time there, sacrificing a storm, sacrificing a dazzle. And they still lose two lanes of racks and now it's just... All of these kills were true with track as well. Yeah, they have buyback. They have now have buyback on Antimage. He can buy uh, Moon Shard or he can buy Boots of Travel too. Whatever he feels like is most important. And they should be able to just take this one home by by slow playing it. Really, just slow sieging top. They just put Crest onto him and he starts hitting the tower. And LGD have to start hard committing. If they do it right now, Salar won't have the MKB and the Antimage is like almost impossible to bring down. Uh, it's, it's a crazy game for Team Empire. After game one has. The boys in the panel were saying it was it was a solid performance by Team Empire. They just had to do the same thing, but finish. Like that's what it's all about. You've got two Raxes down to your one in mid lane. That's the Moonshard. All right, consumed it straight away. But this he's time still, they went still got money for buyback. They went for a completely different uh, approach this time, though. And it seemed like whenever Empire are in important games, we also saw it against Virtus Pro. I think that was. It was at least one of the games against Virtus Pro to fight for fourth place. They also pulled out the silent Antimage, who we got a funny stat on in that game. Hadn't been played since 2014. He hadn't played Antimage this year. And now his first Antimage performance in the group stage was great. They won that game, I do believe, and it looks like it's going to be another. Maybe that is the secret hero. The secret hero for Empire to, uh, to win the key games. This is the movement from LGD. They're going to try and wrap in around behind Team Empire. The Courier is delivering in the gem at the moment, and they actually attack the Courier with the Wolves. This might flag the fact that Empire, they're behind him, and maybe they jump off the Abyssal Blade. They control him in the RP! Catching out two with the Sonic Wave, the Snowball! Protect him long enough! Maybe down jumping himself away. Yoki's trying to chase after the kill, and then even glimpsing him back. Sila down for the count. This could be it. Yao's on the run back. You have your bite coming in from the Lycan, but he's losing his teammate so quickly in any mage, carving him apart. GG, Team Empire will take game number two here, up against the clear favorites for this matchup with an ultra kill for Silent. The Russians have hope here against LGD, forcing to a game three.
I almost want to quote everyone everyone coming into this get in, into this whole TI5. Any game is winnable by any team. Yeah, Anything this, is possible. This was very solid by Empire. They didn't really lose out too much in the early game. Honestly, I also don't feel like LG pressured them that much in the